something to share with you right up front. I am a recovering attorney. <laughs> well, about 11 years ago, I entered law school. My addiction began. Reading laws and learning about FMLA and ADA and negligent hiring and wrongful termination and employment at will and tort law and the thrill it continued. And after law school, I went to business school to get an MBA. And I found a way, even there, when I looked at case studies and I looked at organizations that had been incredibly successful, I found a correlation in many instances with the law. My addiction grew. And I went out and I started teaching after business school. And I taught business law at the University of Texas. And I was teaching and I was having so much fun. And I know for those of you who took your business law classes, you're thinking back to that time in your life and remembering the daily thrill of learning all about those things that managers and supervisors need to know to run a successful and compliant organization. And then I went out and I opened a little business, the law offices of Courtney E. Anderson. And there, there, I was full-fledged in the throes of my addiction. I had the opportunity to deal with our subject that we're discussing during my session here today. And my subject is performance evaluations. Oh my gosh, the memories of the rush I would have when someone would come to my law office and they would tell me that they were fired from their organization. And I would ask them always for a couple of documents. I would say, I'd like to see your employee handbook. I'd like to see your job description. I would like to see any documentation that you were given when the termination occurred. And I would really like to see your performance evaluations. And many, many happy days, the client would turn to me and say, I never received any performance evaluations. Oh. <laughs> Happier words I've never heard. Why did, it, why did it lift me up so much inside? when I would have someone tell me they'd worked at an organization for five years and never received a performance evaluation. Why was I so happy? Yes, that tells me, yes, ka -ching. <laughs> That tells me that that organization, whether it's a company, a Fortune 500 company, or it's a governmental agency, they're not gonna have any documentation to try to establish that the termination was appropriate. And my poor client, who says they were terminated because they were in an older age group. And we know there's a federal law that at a certain age, employees become federally protected due to their senior status. And what age is that? 40 years old, that's correct. That's correct, there's federal law, age discrimination. And so I'd say to myself, your organization gave you no performance evaluations. So anything that they say they can't back up, it will be their word against yours. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> so when I had the opportunity with my client uh, today, Rockhurst University, and they said, Courtney Anderson, we want you to talk to this room here today in, in Phoenix about making performance evaluations an effective tool. I said, oh my gosh, I could talk for days. One of the things that organizations fail to do is they just don't give them. Okay, that's fine. And another thing that happens is Sometimes our organizations, our managers and supervisors, the people who give our performance evaluations, haven't received the appropriate training in their human resources employment law area. And so, for instance, have any of your uh, organizations ever encountered a team member who was habitually late to work? Anyone ever had someone not come to work with them? It's kind of common. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> What I will encounter is a supervisor who has someone who doesn't come to work on time. We'll call that person Becky. Becky does not come to work on time, habitually. But Becky 
is a 65-year-old Asian woman in a wheelchair. <laughs> and so that manager or supervisor will say to themselves, I can't give Becky a, a poor performance evaluation. And why do they think that? Because she'll sue. She'll sue. We can't use progressive discipline, and we certainly don't want to give her a negative performance evaluation. So what we'll do is we'll give Becky a glowing performance evaluation. It exceeds expectations. And so over time, Becky will work at the organization and she'll have performance evaluation after performance evaluation, attesting to what a wonderful team member she is. And one day, one day, the organization will become fed up with Becky not coming to work. And they'll, what will they do? They'll fire Becky. Yes. What's the problem, though, with their performance evaluation? They lie, and what lawyers, which I'm recovering, what lawyers will do is the reason lawyers ask to look at performance evaluations is because I'm going to read them in chronological order. That's what I do, partially because we know it's fun. And secondly, <laughs> I know, I know you, some of you share the same, the same struggle I have. And I'll read these performance evaluations in chronological order, and what am I looking for? I'm looking for a pattern. I'm basically, it's like a, for me, it's like reading a good novel. I'm looking for a story that makes sense. If I see poor performance evaluation, poor performance evaluation, poor performance evaluation, termination, does that make sense? Yes. And then the company would say, well, we terminated Becky because she did not come to work on time. And we've documented it, and we gave her performance evaluations and an opportunity to correct her behavior, and she didn't. But oh my goodness, that manager or supervisor that didn't receive appropriate training, doesn't understand how to use performance evaluations, will write the glowing performance evaluation. So I will read, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful termination. <laughs> and then the organization will try to claim, well, we terminated Becky because she didn't come to work on time. What's the problem, though? Yeah, your paperwork doesn't show me that story. Your paperwork says that Becky was wonderful and awesome. And now you're trying to claim that she wasn't. Something doesn't make sense. And so back in my former career, that's one of the other most common things that we see, performance evaluations. One, people don't give them at all. Two, people give them inappropriately because they think that someone's going to sue us. Is it true, is it true that in America, is it true that we have a lot of lawsuits? Do we have a lot of lawsuits? Do we have a lot of lawyers? Yes, the group that I, I'm trying to, to, to leave behind, there are over a million attorneys in the United States. It's more per capita than anywhere in the world. And all of these people have to eat and pay their bills. <laughs> so, if I, if I was still actively taking new law cases and I was here today, I, I would tell you, I can feel, and, and let me share a little bit about, about myself, a little bit more about my background. I was in college for, it was nine years that I was in college, quite a while. And um, of course, that's because I have a lifelong passion for learning. And I didn't quite know what I wanted to do when I grew up. Okay, now, when I left home at 17, my parents, which uh, were, my family is very rich in ideas and emotional support, but my family wasn't rich in money. And so they said, go out into the world, it's a good idea to go to college, we wish you the best, goodbye and good luck. And so financially, when I was in school for that nine years, I had the opportunity to work many different jobs, to put myself through school, and to eat, have a place to stay. And so I've had the opportunity to work in retail. I worked at the mall as a salesperson. I've had the opportunity to work in food service. I've been a pizza delivery driver for Papa John's, Domino's, Pizza Hut, and Mr. Patty's. <laughs> I had the opportunity to be a bartender and a waitress. And I also had the opportunity to work a job for two years that I was very successful at, and I enjoyed almost as much as being an attorney. And I worked for a company called Psychic Friends Network. Um, now, I, I'm sure that, I'm sure none of you ever called 
And I'm, <clears throat> I'm sure that if you're not familiar with the company, um, they had an ad campaign with an actress uh, who was portraying Madame Cleo. That's the uh, same company that I worked for. But this was several years ago when I was one of their team members. And so we had Dionne Warwick as our spokesperson back then. I still do hold my certification as a phone psychic. I, I, I still do. And <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. And, and so what happened is I came down this morning and I was so pumped up and excited about this topic because it was, of course, bringing me back to, to the days, to the happy days when the customers would say the, the magic words, no performance evaluations. Uh, and so I was thinking about that and, and I, I, I was walking around the room and, and meeting some of you and my, my psychic abilities, which are still strong, um, were telling me that, that there are people in this room right now who are e either not using performance evaluations, you're not giving them, or you're inflating them because you have this fear of lawsuits. I know some of you are in here, but I'm not taking new cases as a lawyer. So I'm here today in the capacity of my new, my new vocation, and that's a trainer and a consultant. And what I've tried to do is replace my passion for the law and the lawsuit. I've tried to replace that with the passion to prevent them. Because the thing about these employment law litigation situations is they are 100% preventable. Your organization has to prioritize the importance of the training which is required for supervisors and managers to be able to effectively use performance evaluations. And the exciting thing is that, of course, hopefully all of us will be back together here in Phoenix in April for the leadership conference. And there are so many great things about training on legal issues. One of them is that the law is constantly changing. And so, with our specific topic here about performance evaluations, just last year in 2002, we have a new federal law, the Sarbanes-Oxley law that came in. We had some companies out there, I know it's hard to believe, you weren't doing the right thing, you weren't following the law. I live in Austin, Texas, and there were even some Texas companies, like Enron, that were not doing the right thing. <laughs> so, thanks to that, we have a new law and here it is. I will go into the details when we get back together in April and you bring the rest of your staff, but individuals at an organization, individual managers and supervisors, can face and are facing up to a maximum of 10 years in prison for failure to appropriately utilize performance evaluations. We need to talk about that. We need to learn about that. We need to see what's happening. So, I have been honored to spend this time here with you today. Hopefully we will, as hopefully all of us will get an opportunity to meet. And if not, please feel free to come up to me and ask me any questions. <clears throat> and I look forward to seeing the rest of you and your organizations in April here in Phoenix for the conference. I thank you very much for your time and attention. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.